I beg your pardon. I do beg your pardon. I can't blame you for stopping your ears, but not for the actual him itself. Again, I do beg your pardon. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Not hallelujah. Like I said, I do beg your pardon. What a friend we have in Jesus. Well, before we begin, uh, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Um, but before we begin, prayer requests. A beloved, a beloved brother, a friend, a true saint of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who lives in Australia, needs prayer of ye, the Church of the Living God. This beloved brother, this friend, true friend, sustained an injury, a wound of some sort, upon himself a week ago. And um, this wound is starting to bear an odor. I mentioned, I talked with him about it. He, he said nothing of gangrene. But um, we have to understand something, brethren. Australia. Oh, Australia is a wicked nation. America is a disgusting Jesuit wicked nation. But Australia is a wicked nation. It is not like here in America. It is not as bad as it is in Australia yet. For example... If someone goes to a hospital here in America, when they have no choice, okay, when there is no choice, at least hospitals around here are not going to force vaccination on you, force jamming stuff in your nose. Well, that they do, but um, not like they do in Australia. You know, if you go to the hospital for something minor, like, uh, you know, to get stitched up 
or something like that. Um, and I remember when I got stitches before, I you didn't even have to leave the one room. They just came in there. It's like they shoot you up with stuff. So your, your stuff uh, gets all puffy and then they sew you up and then you go home. Um, for stuff like that, uh, apparently here in hospitals, they don't jab the thing up your nose. But in Australia, needless to say, this, this true friend, this saint, he's not going to a doctor or a hospital because of the way it is in his nation. Brethren, as I trust our best friend, Alexander Hartley, with our, with our lives, if this brother were close by in our nation, he would be one also whom I would trust with my very life as well. He is a friend, a true saint. Please keep your brother in Australia in your prayers that maybe the Lord will heal him. Because rightfully so. I mean, there is information out there where they in Australia are forcing, like holding people down, literally forcing the steel of the Jesuit punyard on people. And our dear brother, rightfully so, doesn't want to be subjected to that. So please, please keep him in your prayers. And also, there's a sister who has one whom she loves very much and one unto whom she is considering for her husband. But unfortunately, the one she is considering or wants or whatever is not a saved man. But this individual, this man, is asking all the right questions and apparently seems to be seeking. Please keep this dear young sister in, our, in your prayers, too, that the Lord will open the eyes of her friend who she seeks to marry, who she wants to marry, that uh, this friend of hers may be broken brought to contrition in the fear of the Lord, and truly be saved, born again, converted, and be of the church of the living God. Please, brethren. And also, a beloved brother, a friend, in North Dakota. Please keep a brother of ours, a friend, from North Dakota in your prayers, whose health, It's not getting better. Not because of the, the ridiculous, stupid, uh, Jesuitical, uh, psychological operation. No, no, no. Just his health is not getting better. Please keep your brother from North Dakota in your prayers that the Lord will bring healing upon him and that he may do as he needs do to bring about such healing. And also a brother from northeast, from the northeast, who struggles daily with um, family problems. A beloved brother, a dear friend, a sweet, sweet saint in the Lord. Hmm. As we sung that hymn today, brother, you watching me? Take it to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. Please keep our brother from the Northeast in your prayers. And also to our beloved brother, our best friend, Alexander Hartley, who may be coming to see us next week. It is next week because today is Sunday, but who may be coming to see us soon. Please uh, pray for him for guidance and what he should do. Please. And also for a dearly, dearly beloved sister. Also a friend. Please keep her in your prayers. That the Lord will continue to bless her, lead her and guide her, and shield her from 
persistent devils who only come to seek destruction and thrive off of contention and strife. Thank you. There are many more, but um, we, we, we pray for many people. You know, my, uh, one who is of actually my kindred, uh, remember, because I am over 60% Spanish. I have over 60% Spanish blood within me. Uh, there is a, a brother who is of, I could legitimately say, of my kindred, <laughs> being a Spaniard, who needs your prayers as well. And there are so many others. A young brother from Alabama. Um, a brother in Oregon. So many. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. Well, I had told, I, I mentioned this in the previous video, I had said unto several people that I believed that September was going to be a trying month. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> and sure enough, it has been a trying month for us. It started with an unfortunate problem between two brethren that went for the worst and now is, on, is beyond repair. Unfortunately, it began with that. Then betrayal by two coadjutor pond scum devils who seek to infiltrate to cause um, chaos, confusion, discord, to sow discord among brethren. Then my wife's health issues. And then my wife sustaining a massive injury, <laughs> which praise the Lord, the Lord protected guided, and brought us through all things. But you know what, brethren? During all these things that we have had, which have befallen us this month, you know, a disagreement with a brother, two uh, coadjutors uh, betrayed us, uh, my wife's health issues, uh, an injury, okay? <laughs> through all of that, Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He has brought us through. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. All glory goes to him. Because you know when you get affliction upon you, brethren, turn in your authorized version um, of the scriptures to Hebrews chapter 12. When you go through affliction, brethren, the greatest the best place you can be is, number one, have your nose in the scriptures. Number two, you be on your knees boy, in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. When you're going through affliction, when things just one after another is happening upon you, that's the best place you can be is have your nose in the scriptures and have your knees, be on your knees in prayer unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 on to verse 28. Now you got to remember, the book of Hebrews is written unto the Hebrews for the time of Jacob's trouble. But for our instruction and in righteousness... Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 on to verse 28. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Shake. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken. 
as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. See, the book of Hebrews is written unto the Hebrews for the time of Jacob's trouble, because after the time of Jacob's trouble, when our Lord comes down uh, at his second coming with us, the church of the living God, his body, okay, that will institute what? The kingdom of heaven, okay? But look at verse 27. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. There's a machine, a device, a tree shaker or nut shaker, I think it's called. You can look online. It's what it is. It's something on wheels that people will, that farmers will bring to a tree and it has two things on either side and it goes up to the tree and they hit the button and the thing goes like da 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 and it shakes the tree so that the nuts or fruits fall out of it. If you ever seen anything like that, I mean, you can Google search that kind of thing. What it's actually called, I do not know, but they have a device like that. Same principle, same principle. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as things that are made. Things that are made. Like fellow persons, spirit's own body, shaken that they may be removed. Things may be shaken that you take your mind off of things that they need not be on, that you will be focused solely on the Lord. As we have discussed before, read Amos chapter 4 on your own time, please. And you'll see five times in the book of Amos chapter 4, five times, yet ye have not returned unto me. God will allow things, circumstances, afflictions, tribulations to, number one, remove things from your life that needn't be there, certain people that needn't be there, or certain things that you're diverting your attention from in order that you will turn unto him. Because I'll tell you what, brothers, sisters, church of living God, this whole past month, <laughs> knees are getting uh, worn red and wearing out the scriptures praise the Lord we do that every day but when it comes to trials and afflictions where is your eye focus it's easy to take our eyes off of Christ and put them on things that we needn't have our focus on for these things are temporal Okay? These, these sufferings are temporal. Okay? Not eternal. They'll last just for a moment. But our light affliction that lasteth for a moment will bring us a more exceeding weight of eternal glory. I just Brad, I said, beg your pardon. Okay? Through our trials, our tribulations, through our sufferings this month, my wife and I, we have done nothing but looked unto the Lord and praised the Lord. You know, yesterday we got our new hymn books, okay? Uh, uh, we got new hymn books, so my wife and I, and if we have uh, brethren come and visit us, we will have hymn books so we can all sing hymns. We, we sang hymns unto the Lord in light of all of our afflictions. We had communion with the Lord. See, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Having that blessed assurance, knowing that you are of the church of the living God, that this, that, what, what else? What else? What else is he going to do? Hmm? What else is the accuser of the brethren going to be allowed to do? Because remember Job, 
who was afflicted. When he lost one, two, three, four things, just like that, what did he do? He shaved his head, rent his mantle, fell on the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I into this world, or naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked will I return hither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then when his health failed, he never charged the Lord foolishly. Even when his own flesh and blood, his wife, said, Thus thou uh, still retain thy integrity, curse God and die. And Job said, You speak like one of the foolish women speaking. What? Shall we receive good at the hands of the Lord and not evil? And all this, Job did not sin with his mouth or, or um, charge God foolishly. Something to consider about your trials and tribulations that you're going through, brethren. Yes, it could be Satan. But also, what if it's something that the Lord is allowing on to you it's because he wants you to get back to more pristine relationship? Drop everything else. Because brethren, there are situations that our Lord will allow that will make you drop everything and turn to the Lord in prayer with tears and weeping and supplication and fasting. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. We will be reading verses 16 on to the close of the chapter. Galatians chapter 2. We're going to be looking a little bit at Paul here. Okay? Paul. Through a lot of his tribulations. Okay? Okay? Galatians chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 21. Of course, follow me along. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And then, nowadays, what law are you talking about? The law given to you by uh, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, or the actual law in the scripture? And the law in the scripture is not needful, necessary, what required for us today to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. Okay? It's not a requirement. If you want to do it, knock yourself out. You're not required to do so today. Okay? But see, you've got to remember that Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order, they're all about counterfeiting what the Lord is, what he does, his laws, his statutes. So through his church, Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, they have the catechism and all their myriad of laws. Hmm. Let's continue. But if we seek to be justified, justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Yeah, an innocent man died for the ungodly. See, that's why it's by grace through faith. See, you wicked devils, you wicked pond scum devils who want to go up some other way. You're a thief and a robber. You have not even the beginning understanding of what true grace is. And you ought to because most of you devils are still alive. Let's continue. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, carnal, carnal law, that's what the carnal ordinances of the law, okay? For if righteousness come by the law, something that you do, 
then Christ is dead in vain. The imputed righteousness unto the saved sinner. Imputed because you came to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, called upon the name of the Lord. And if he saved you, you are a new creature. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Christ lives within you, see. And the Lord is that spirit, that circumcision made without hands. Okay? I am crucified with Christ. Crucified to this. To this. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. God lives within you, church of the living God. Do you understand the magnitude of such a statement that you and I as the church of the living God can truly say? Because when Christ lives in you, people notice that. That's why people will, um, from the enemy, come in and try to uh, trip you up. Because they know that you are of the church of the living God. And they come in to sow discord amongst the brethren and, and turn brethren against each other. Go to Galatians chapter 6 now. Verses 12 on to verse 18. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Ah, yes, a fair shoe in the flesh to make it look like they're so innocent, righteous, and pious. We don't know what's going on kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, they go after the true church and living God, lest they themselves suffer persecution because they fear man. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Hence the tactics of every coadjutor and every devil out there. They want to turn you away from the scriptures. They want to turn you away from the truth. They want to turn you against one another so that they can glory in your flesh. Look what we've done. See, this is why I don't name my enemies. Because remember, the enemies want to take away people from the church of the living God and draw followers after themselves. For example, my dear, dear friend, <coughs> beg your pardon, in um, Blackpool, he would love nothing more for me to throw his name out there. Because why? That would get people going to him. Okay? Our dear, dear friends out from Northeast who betrayed us, they would love nothing more than to hear their name said here so people will be drawn after them. See, they're wicked. That is what the devils want. They want you to name them. And yes, there is a time and a place to name people. But brethren, you got to remember, these enemies want the publicity. They want you to name them so they may revel in the fact that they, number one, got your attention, got your goat, and number two, that because you have named them, people are going to check them out. I ain't going to give you scum devils that satisfaction, even though you know that I'm talking about you. I won't do it. I won't do it. There are people who watch these videos that the Lord does through me, and they'll, they'll email me. It's like, you're talking about me. Am I? Am I talking about you? Am I? See, when I do these, yes, I'm talking to you, whoever you are, because I am talking directly to you, whoever you are. Whoever, whoever you are who will watch this, I am speaking to you. The Lord, through me, through the scriptures, is speaking to you. That's how it works, see. Okay? The scripture testifies. The Lord, the Holy Ghost, gives testimony to what is said. Am I talking to you? If you're watching this, yes, I am talking to you. I am. 
I don't know who you are. I don't know what you've done. The Lord does. But yeah, I am talking to you. And that's the way it is, see. Let's continue. Verse 14. Contrast. From those who want to glory in flesh, glory in the things of man, like these devil coadjutors, these this pond scum does. They glory in men. They glory in flesh. They glory in their pathetic numbers, which is greater than the church of the living God. But here's the contrast. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Israel means what? Prince of God. That's what Israel means, okay? I'm going to be doing a video about what is a Jew sometime in the near future, okay? Verse 17. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Look at verse 17. Don't look at me. Look at verse 17. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. Let no man trouble me. Now, you and I, brethren, where we don't bear physical markings, a majority of us don't. In other nations, you might. I don't know. But a majority of us have not resisted sin unto the shedding of blood. Okay? Especially in America, a majority of us have not suffered often too physically for our faith. Some have. Okay? During the, um, the Masonic, hence Jesuit created Black Lives Matters um, uh, protests and whatnot. There were those of the Church of the Living God, I believe, were truly beaten because of their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Those saints will be well rewarded for what um, for their stand for our Lord Jesus Christ, absolutely. But a majority of us have not physically gone through what Paul has gone through. But there again, we have suffered persecution. We have. And what Paul here says? He says, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. Because people were questioning Paul. They doubted Paul quite often. Hmm. Are you saved, Paul? If you're of the church and living God? More often than not. But he says, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And Paul sure did. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 15. Then you get these, these crazy psycho people like the Catholics and their prosperity gospel garbage. You know, God wants to bless you and you got... I don't know how anyone in their right mind can believe that Joel Osteen is up the church of the living God. But see, a lot of you lost people, you want stuff like that. You want a genie in a bottle. You don't want a God that's going to approve you for sin and wants to clean up your life according to the scriptures when you adhere to the scriptures. No, you want just a God who'll give you everything and cost you nothing. It does cost us nothing, but see what it costs is our pride. And for some of you, that's a price way too far, way too heavy for you to bear, isn't it? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, chapter 4, excuse me, verses 9 on to verse 15. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels and to men, a spectacle. 
We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. How many of you can relate with that? How many of you can relate with this? And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Oh, thank you for insulting me. No, no, no. Lord, have mercy upon this wicked devil. May you break him that he may come to salvation. That's how we bless people when we are reviled. And if they have made their choice and served the Vatican, their master is the devil. Lord, your righteous judgment be upon them. Leave them alone. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Now that's where you and I, that's where you and I can relate to Paul. Being defamed, we entreat. Again, some commonalities but with myself, yourself, and the Apostle Paul, if you're of the Church of the Living God, huh? Have you ever been defamed? Hi! <laughs> Hi! Let no man, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. Here. To all you pond scum devils. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. We are made as the filth of the world. See, the, Christ, the Christianity, the Christ that they are preaching from the church buildings, that's what this lost world really wants. They can get along with that Jesus, but the Jesus who is of the authorized version of the scriptures, and when you adhere to that, <laughs> you, you could just be sitting there reading the scriptures and people glare at you. And you can be, you know, reading, and you look up, it's like, whoa. And as someone, like, who's wearing glasses like I do to read, glaring at you, like giving you the death stare, it's like, whoa. And you look over there, there's a woman and another, and a husband looking at you, like wanting you to, it's like, knowing that you're reading the scriptures. There are, there are times, brethren, that you don't even have to say a word, and you'll get persecution. Why? Because it's an opposing spirit. They have that spirit of Antichrist. We have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. Christ dwelleth within me. See, they know that. Verse 14. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul was our example to follow, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. He is the apostle of the Gentile, but the doctrine for this dispensation was revealed unto Paul, not unto Peter, who was the apostle unto the Jews, the circumcision. Okay? Okay? Meaning, when he says, in Christ yet have ye not many fathers, it's not that satanic Jesuit dog collar thing that uh, Satan's church wants to justify about father so-and-so. No, meaning that spiritual fathers, meaning... You heard the gospel through Paul. Henceforth, because of that, he um, you heard the gospel from him, through him, okay? Meaning he's he takes a role of a spiritual father. Because our Lord is quite specific. Call no man on earth your father, meaning a religious title. Okay? You can call your father your father. Don't call him daddy. Don't call him daddy. That That's not in the scripture. Uh, people like to say, Abba, Father. Oh, shush. Shush. 
deal with the scriptures. Okay? The point is, look at what some of these things that Paul went through as an apostle. Oh, 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 but there's even more. There's even more. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 on to verse 30. Verses 24 on to verse 30 in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Here's some of what Paul went through. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I sh suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen. Uh-huh. In perils by the heathen. Uh-huh. In perils in the city. Oh, yeah. In perils in the wilderness. Yep. In perils in the sea. In perils among... <laughs> yeah, false brethren. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've all been in perils because of what? False brethren. Oh, yeah. In weariness and painfulness. In watching, watchings often. In hunger and thirst. In fastings often. In cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without... That which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Without, but cometh upon him daily, that his heart yearn for the churches and not the buildings, the people. The people. Now that's one of the hardest things about these coadjutor pond scum who betray you. Especially when you weep for them. Literally shed tears in prayer for them. Only to find out that they're fake. That hurts. That, that hurts. That takes a while to get over. But see, again, that's what those types of people thrive off of. Okay? But there again, see Paul with all these things without. All these physical things but within. Verse 29, who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? Verse 30 is, is key. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. And then, of course, very quickly, verse 9 in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Read it on your own time, but verse 9 and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, certain circumstances, certain things will come. See, contrary to what people believe, there is people out there who say that God will not give you more than you can handle. That's a lie! He purposely gives you more than you can handle. So you will not trust upon your own self that you have to go to Him for He to get you through it. What it says is that He will not uh, suffer you to be tempted, tempted more than you are able, but that with the temptation He will make a way of, of escape. The Scripture says nothing about Him not giving you more than you can handle. He does the opposite. He gives you way more than you can handle, so you won't depend on your own strength, see. It's the temptation. He will not suffer you to be tempted more than you are able. But with the temptation, he will make a way to escape. I think that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I think it is. 
go find that on your own time. One of you, please put the verse uh, scripture in the uh, in the comment section for me, please. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. The point is, you can't be self-sufficient. You have to be Christ-dependent. And I'm telling you, you start to get a little self-sufficient on yourself. Oh, you think you got enough money saved up for when everything crashes, huh? You think you got enough food, huh? Then like the one parable of our Lord with the one guy said, oh, I don't got enough room for my stuff. So what I'm going to do is pull down my own my old barns and build new ones so I can bestow all my stuff. I'm bradizing. Beg your pardon. Then the Lord says, thou fool, this night your life will be required of thee. And all that stuff you got, who's it's going to be? Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I am not used to this set of scriptures. <laughs> I am not used to this set of scriptures at all. Here, this is the one I'm using. That that companion thing, yeah, you see that? Yeah, I'm using that. I'm using this one for this uh, for this video. I'm not used to it at all. <laughs> this one has absolutely horrific capitalization issues in it. There are capitalization capitalizations in this that are n n nowhere in the Cambridge or even in the Oxford um, 1970, whatever. But let's continue. Um, Proverbs chapter 37, verses 1 under verse 12. Let no man trouble me. Let no man, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. You of the church of the living God, we probably, we haven't gone, been shipwrecked or done, been what through Paul has been through for the extent but being persecuted, being defamed, in perils of false brethren, fastings, watchings, hunger, sadness, despair. You, you and I, we've been there. You and I, we've been there, haven't we? If, if not, you might want to do some examination. Psalm 37, verses 1 and verse 12. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. There's none good, no, not one. So do good. How do you, how do, you do good? Live your life according to the scripture. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So dwelling and being fed is dependent on what? Trusting the Lord and doing good. Conditional. Remember, this is the Psalms, a different dispensation. But the instruction in righteousness is. Yeah, um, you're of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus, you know. Um, yeah, you're going to go to heaven, but you know... If you're messing around, not living according to the scriptures, oh boy. Oh boy, yeah, it can cost you plenty. Let's continue. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That's what you said to me this morning, to their sister, who asked for that prayer request. And don't worry, we're praying for you, of course. We always have been. Uh, verse 5 commit thy way unto him trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noon day your righteousness today is the imputed righteousness given to us of Jesus Christ it's not our righteousness it's his okay and thy judgment as the noon day 
See, when you ad adhere to the scriptures and line your life up with the scriptures and walk that way according to the scriptures, and like judgment as the noonday, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday, his righteousness will shine forth through you, and his judgment by the way you are adhering to the scriptures. See, it is important how you walk, dear friend. Not just when people are seen, when it's just the four walls and just the Lord looking down on you too. Okay, let's continue. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. <laughs> Rest. In the Lord. Rest. Do you have rest in the Lord? Sometimes it takes tribulation. A lot of trials and a lot of suffering. So you to get your eyes off of what it shouldn't be. So it may be put upon what it should be. And hence, rest. I'll tell you what, brother. Sister, recently, last, especially last week, the rest we have been getting, well, my wife has been having some troubles, but, but the rest we have, so sweet. Why? Why? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And see, this is right here is something that these devils want to bring you on to. And see, you're very clever, you. That's what some a lot of my enemies want to do. Because my enemies do know that I get angry. My enemies do know that I have a temper. And that I will go off and that I will go after them without naming them, which drives them crazy. Yay, I'm happy to irritate you. But um, this is something, brethren, that we all have to take notice of. There is a place for righteous indignation. Amen. And look, amen. But anger resteth in the bosom of fools. And the scriptures tell us, Be ye angry and sin not, and let not the sun go down upon thine anger. Don't go to bed angry. And I've failed that, and so have you, on many occasions. We are supposed to let things go and not fight fire with fire. See, that's the... That's, we're not supposed to do... wage battle as our enemies do. That's why... That's a very telling thing that you're a lost man when you're doing the same things that known devils are doing. We're supposed to be different. But utilizing the very same tactics, the very same identical tactics that the enemy does. And you're saved. I think perhaps maybe no. No. But see, brethren, we can't fight fire with fire. Every single one of us can do that. Paul could have done that, but he didn't. He didn't. He embraced his infirmities so that Christ could be strong through him in his infirmities. Paul was Christ dependent. There were some times when Paul suffered with self-sufficiency, yes. But then you read in Philippians, I know how to abound and to be abased. I know how to suffer need and boast, both and whatever. Okay, but at the end of the day, Paul was Christ dependent, not self-sufficient. And that, my friends, is what the enemy hates the most. Let's continue this. Verse 9, and here's something we all have to remember. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. 
Yet thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. You'll consider so and so. Where is he? I don't know. Gone off the face of the earth. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Did he get saved, I hope? No? Oh. Well, so sad for you. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Rest and peace. Through rest comes peace. You can have peace, but have no rest. Because they're saying, we need peace and safety. But how many people out there have rest? you're not having rest, and I'm not talking about rest that just comes in sleep, with sleep, and that's a big part of it, but rest. If you have no rest in the Lord, maybe you need to really consider why. <laughs> the wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Oh, and ain't that the truth, huh? The wicked plot against the just. Those who are justified by grace through faith. Okay? We're justified by our faith, by grace, through faith. Okay? By grace, through faith. Okay? Why? Because we have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, that his blood shed cleanseth us from all sin. Okay? Psalm 112. Well, the layout of this set of scriptures is really... I would not recommend this. I, bought, I was able to purchase this because in the back here, this guy has all these appendix, appendages or something like that where he talks about the serpent seed doctrine, soul annihilationism. I, I, I got this with the intent to debunk a lot of what this Bollinger guy taught. I haven't gotten around to that yet. <laughs> but anyway, Psalm 112. Notice in uh, Psalm 37, he's talking about the wicked who attack the just and stuff like that. Psalm 112. Blessed, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And if you have, if you delighteth greatly in his commandments and fear him, you're going to depart from evil, and you're going to be wise because of it. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. His seed, meaning those who are of Christ, the church of the living God. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. We have the church of the living God, even in suffering and tribulation, we're blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Remember, wealth and riches is not always do re me. Plenty of food, plenty of provision, okay? Clean clothes, bills paid. It's not just this. You got to get your mind out of it's always money. No, no. Yes, it is that sometimes, but that's not all it's about. Don't forget that. See, see you get that from the church buildings. Don't blame you. But see, a lot of you come, come up hearing what they, the lost world, calls Christian. And it's not of the church of the living God. Let's continue. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man sheweth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. 
I remember what the Lord saved me from. We remembered that we are saved of the church of the living God. And all that we have been going through lately. You haven't sidetracked us from taking our attention away from the Lord. You haven't sidetracked us to doubt or to fall. And matter of fact, you have, through what you have done, you devils, you have made us focus even more so on our Lord, and he has blessed us greatly. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. I am crucified unto the world. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ dwelleth within me. Again, do you get the magnitude of what that actually means? God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know the Holy Ghost, Lord is that Spirit, who made everything, dwells in you, Church of the Living God. You know that. I know that. But the gravity of it. Take a day just to sit there and ponder, truly, the gravity that Jesus Christ dwells within you. His heart is established and shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 30, wow, this is really confusing. Verses 31 on to verse 39. All these things, attacks from the enemies, reproach, necessities, distresses, persecutions, nakedness, wounds. Church of the living God. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? The elect, again, is not the Calvinistic thing. It's God has chosen the way of the cross. And for you to be saved, you have to go to our Lord through the cross. Meaning, brokenness of your self-righteousness, contrition, godly sorrow for your sins, and fear of the Lord. Okay? That is the elect way. Okay? That's what he's talking about. Okay? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I just lost my pay. Okay. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved, past tense, us. For I am persuaded, the longer I walk with our Lord, even more so. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, 
nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, one of the telltale things, what was that, Psalm, um, might be Psalm 40 or Psalm 141. Uh, uh, um, hold on, brethren, I'm going to pause this. Okay, sorry, brethren. It's, it is Psalm 41, not Psalm 141. Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Okay? I have been attacked by traitors and devils and Jesuits. Been threatened by Jesuits. My life has been threatened. Psalm 41. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. <laughs> see, the scriptures have your numbers, you wicked devils. <laughs> All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. And how many of you have been through this yourselves, huh? An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. <laughs> Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me. Why? Because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. You haven't triumphed over me. Why? Because the Lord is not allowing it. Why? Because I belong unto him. And you don't. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A just man falleth seven times and getteth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. Take comfort in that, brethren. Take comfort in this. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. And amen. Because let's remember something. Go now to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I might have to put this away and go get to my Cambridge because this is really getting confusing to me here. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 10 on to verse 15. Paul towards the latter end of his life with all that he went through. 2 Timothy 3, verses 10, on to verse 15. Oh, no, let's read the entire, to the end of the chapter. 
But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Why? Because he was Christ-dependent. Verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. See, that's our tie with those that have been before us, brethren. We are suffering persecution. See, there are some of you out there who's like, I don't know if I have anything in common with the people of Scripture. <laughs> that might be the case for some of you. But um, if you're living your life according to the Scriptures, and you're being persecuted for it, you share a bond with those before us of the church of the living God. See, you can rightly say with Paul, I am crucified unto the world, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Dwelleth or liveth, I can't think of it off right hand. It's uh, uh, second, uh, Galatians 2, verse 20. But, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. Christ lives in you. And because of that, brethren, you're going to suffer persecution. And I pray it be because you're standing and living for the, uh, according to the scriptures and not because you were unwise and behaved foolishly and gave yourself over to sin. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and have been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who has he learned them from? And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Scriptures, Christ Jesus. Then Jesus himself opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. So Jesus Christ through the scriptures taught Timothy. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been and hast been assured of. Tell me something, friends. Do you have that blessed assurance? Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Do you have that blessed assurance? Oh, you might say, oh, I, I'm saved. And yet you, you cuss like a sailor. You do use deceptive, deceitful, wicked, Jesuit tactics to deceive people and cause confusion and discord and strife, but yet you're saved, right? Yeah. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Boy, this guy has this really messed up the way that's put there. He's got the verse there, but that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Look at verses 10 on to verse 12 again. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, but out of them all of the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Here's the thing, brethren. Paul, as you and I, as the church of the living God, could easily rightly say, Christ liveth in me. 
Our enemies can't hurt or attack Christ. But you know what they can do? They can attack you. And when they're attacking us, they're in effect attacking him. Because what did Jesus say unto Saul on the Damascus road? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So see, the only way these devils can attack Christ is to attack us, his body. See, the devil, they couldn't whip Christ out of him. They couldn't stone Christ out of him. They couldn't drive Christ out of him. Couldn't drown Christ out of him. Couldn't uh, persecute, suffer, um, uh, defame Christ out of Paul. Why? Because Christ dwelleth in me. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. All these things they did unto Paul to get to Christ who dwelt in him. But all the while, all they can do is kill the body, the skin suit, and after that there's nothing more they can do. You see? For we wrestle not, what does that say? Ephesians 6.12, go there. Okay, I'm not going to botch that because this, you know, Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual, spiritual wickedness in high places. See, the devil wants to attack you and me because Christ dwells within us. And all they can do to us, brethren, they can't drive Christ out of us. And see what happens as we're living as that example. And they can't drive Christ out of us. They still go on after us, don't they? That explains to you the relentless fervor that they have in persecuting the church of the living God. Go to Jeremiah chapter 38 now. Jeremiah chapter 38. Verses 1. On the verse 5. Then Sephatiah the son of Matan, and Gedaliah the son of Peshur, and Jukal the son of Shelemiah, and Peshur the son of Melchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in the city shall die by the sword, by the famine and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall save, for he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. See, all the false prophets in the time of Jeremiah were saying, Stay, fight these people. When the Lord God to Jeremiah was saying, uh, No, give up and surrender to the Chaldeans and I'll give you mercy. See, the false prophets were itching the ears of the people, telling them what they want to hear, while the true prophet of God was telling them what they needed to hear, and they wanted nothing to do with it. Do you wonder why they hate us, brethren? Thus saith the Lord, verse 3, This city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Therefore the princes said unto the king, We beseech thee, Think about, put this in context for today. Let this man be put to death, for thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in the city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. Oh, oh, how, 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 how that's been leveled on me many a times. You're a Christian and you're saying that? Uh, first of all, pal, I'm not a Christian. I'm of the church of the living God, okay? And what you're hearing from the buildings is from Satan. You ever run into this before, huh? My wife and I have both run into this. How about you? 
This is happening today, especially those of us of the Church of the Living God who are standing for the Scriptures, being an example unto the lost out there. Okay, let's continue. Look at Zedekiah. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. <laughs> because in reality, the government ought to fear the people, not the people fear the government. And Zedekiah, rightfully so, feared the people. But see, here in America, the people fear the government. When in reality, our government fears the people. But because of the Jesuits and all their stuff, they have a, a lot of the people here in America suppressed. And in, especially the poor people in uh, Australia as well. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 12, under verse 20. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Verse 16, just like with Jeremiah. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. They would exclude you that ye might affect them to draw disciples after them like Paul warns about in Acts chapter 20 about the grievous wolves that will come in wanting to draw disciples after them okay but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing and not only when I am present with you zealously affected in a good thing My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ, be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now, and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Paul actually had a lot of doubt of some of the Galatians, because they were giving themselves over onto the law and forsaking the true gospel, going into the traditions of man and philosophy and vain deceit, rather than adhering unto the scripture. And back then, they didn't have these. They had the epistles been being written to them uh, as the Lord will, but they also had the Old Testament scriptures. Don't forget that. Okay, Don't forget that. See, that's another ploy and trick of those Vatican coadjutors who said, well, they didn't have a completed scripture back there, so they went off of their feelings. Hoy vey, people. Hoy vey. But see, Jeremiah was telling them the truth as Paul was and they were counting him their his, and they were counting him their enemy hmm. very interesting I'll go to Jeremiah chapter 20 Jeremiah chapter 20 Jeremiah chapter 20. Of course, we're going to read the whole chapter. <gasps> now Peshur the son of Emir, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Peshur smoked Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. Now this is before, obviously, bleep, Jeremiah chapter 38. But see, this is what Jeremiah went through, standing for the truth. Kind of like what Paul went through, standing for the truth. 
Let's continue. And they, just as in Jeremiah's day, they attacked the prophet because they couldn't attack the Lord directly. See, they wanted to kill the messenger because the messenger is the one who represented, you know, being an ambassador, having the word of reconciliation. That's why they attacked the messenger, brethren. Then Peshur smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Peshur brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Peshur, but Magor Misebib. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and they shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city, and all the labors thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them to Babylon. And that's sure enough what happened. And now, Peshur, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die, and shalt be buried there. Thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied lies. See, those of you who are falling for the lies of these false prophets, you're going to share in their fate. Those of you that are being led astray by these charismatics with all their false prophecies, all of you being led astray by these easy, believes, easy believism devils, you're going to share their fate because you are believing their lies. The ultimate of guilt by association. You need to repent. Verse 7. You know, Jeremiah the weeping prophet, they refer to him as. Weeping over Jerusalem, but also what he went through. Being an ambassador for the Lord. Kind of like what Paul went through. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. Of course the Lord didn't deceive him. Jeremiah is venting. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. Because everyone was saying, peace, peace. And Jeremiah is like, Thus saith the Lord, no, there ain't no peace. They want to hear, you know, they want to hear peace, peace. But the Lord, there ain't no peace. You need to repent. For <laughs> since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Because you stand for the scriptures, the authorized version, then you run into these Christians. It's like, well, that's not, you know, that's a good translation, but there is no perfect translation. The oldest and the best manuscripts and that kind of nonsense, okay? Um, <laughs> there's only one scripture, the authorized version. There are a whole bunch of Bibles. Which one is true? There's only one, the authorized version, King James Version, okay? And because we stand to it, and when you run into these Christians with their NIVs, ESVs, uh, being trained by John MacArthur and all these wicked devils, <laughs> because you adhere to the scripture, the word has made a reproach unto you by the world. Not unto us, because sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. And I did this for three months. There was a time last year in December, I took a sabbatical, if you will. Uh, the Lord was really pushing me to get into ministry. He was. And I was fighting him. When I was younger in my walk, I thought I'd be, a, you know, get into it. But the stark reality is, it's like, no, to be in this capacity, it's a heavy price. It's not as easy as the devils will have you to think. The countless emails, the threats, the insults, all the porn pornographic links. But also what it says in James, be not many masters, for we will be judged more harshly. I just bradized that, okay? This is, this is very serious to be doing this. And I knew that. And for three months, I disappeared, didn't make, and I wasn't even officially in full-time ministry. I was just a guy making videos. But the Lord had something else in mind for me. And I, in that three months, boy, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary with forbearing. I could not stay. I know what that's like. Until it just bursts out of you. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, Peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. Oh, doesn't that sound kind of familiar of what we've already looked at about Paul? Again, but the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. But the Lord brought me out of all of it. That's what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Come on. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 under verse 11. Christ dependent, not self-sufficient. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all, in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God, which hopefully, Lord willing, well, that's what I'm seeking, hoping to be done for you, because of what we've been going through. For as, uh, okay, for as the sufferings of, of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. And whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. So you can see in us, the power of the Lord, of how he has brought both my wife and I through all this horrible month. Yeah, the month ain't over yet. But thus far, praise be the Lord for what he has done for us. Because we are not dependent on us. We are dependent on the Lord, see. And, okay, verse 7. Oh, did we... Uh, Let's read verse 6 again. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, 
which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering, sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so ye be, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. I know for a fact that there are many of you who despair to wake up in the morning. Above your own physical strength. I can make it. God won't give me more than I can handle. That's a lie. It's talking about temptation. God will purposely give you more than you can handle. So you can go to him. But see. Above strength. Anything that you could think of your in your own person. Anything, all your little whatevers have failed you. I know I'm talking to many of you about this. Am I talking to you? Yes. In so much that we despaired even of life. You're afraid. Why? Don't you know that you are accepted in the beloved? Now granted, I understand. I almost died because of my heart problem. I almost died. And yeah, when you actually get to that point where, oh wow, I'm going to die. I, I've, I've said this to you before. We know that we're going to die. I'm talking to the church of the living God. We know we're going to die. We know we're going to die. We know. <laughs> heart and our head. We know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We have the Lord's promises. Amen. Okay? But when you actually face it, When you actually come face to face with death, that changes you. Because it makes what we know in our minds and in our hearts be even more real. Not that we doubt, because we don't. But the reality, if my heart didn't beat again, I would have died. I was there. I actually do know what that's like. And, and a, a very grievous, unfortunate um, problem that myself and a brother of another nation went through. One of the things he said, you seem different. It's like, well, yeah. Yeah. Because I've seen death. That changes you. That changes you. Paul saw death on many occasions. Verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Here it is. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Like I said to you, I almost died from my heart problem. And I know there are many of you, my enemies out there, who wish that I would be dead. 
And just to spite you, I hope the Lord keeps me alive just to spite you. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, who raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 20, okay? I do know of other brethren who have been in similar circumstances. And it's changed them. Because like I said, we know here and we know in our heart to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe every single word of the authorized version of the scriptures. Now go ahead and face it, pal. Go ahead and come that close to it. You're like, the Lord lets your heart beat again. Pain, like a fist grabbing my heart. Right here, right here, on my knees, praying. You know what my fear was? Leaving my wife to this. That's what my fear was. Picking up at verse 12 in Jeremiah 20. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous and seest the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee have I opened my cause. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. You, you run into these twits who fall back onto God knows my heart. And they always say that to defend themselves when they've done something they know is sinful and against scripture. Every single time, without an exception. Uh, yeah, God does know your heart. Um, the heart, uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Man's heart, huh? Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. All the way into the beginning. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Verses 5 and 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Repented, grieved, sorrow. God was sorry here that he had made man on the earth. And wished that he hadn't. So you see repentance. Repented. Equated with grief. Don't let these devil scoundrels. These easy believism twits. Don't fall for the repentance is going from unbelief to belief. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay. But now, now look at verses 11 on to verse 13 in Genesis chapter 6. Read the whole chapter on your own time if you wish, please. It's a good chapter. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Look. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Note that language. For all flesh 
had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the name Noah means comfort, by the way. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. This is obviously before the flood. Then the flood happened, all the atmosphere changed, everything changed because of the flood, right? And God, we see, okay, in the dispensation of the patriarchs, dispensation on the law, we see that man's heart is not good. But see, you satanic evolutionists, the religion of evolution, you say man gets better. Woohoo! Okay, yeah, right. Uh, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. What does God say of man in his heart? In the Pauline epistles. And also in the book of Revelation, talks about how they repented not of their sins to give, God, uh, give glory unto God. Okay? That's another dispensation. The time of, um, the time of Jacob's trouble. Romans chapter 3. The part of the text that these easy believism heretics always conveniently don't want to go through to lead up to what these devils call the pure gospel. They, they like not to talk about these because these verses, Romans 3, verses 10 on to 18, deal with your heart. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, depart from evil. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. My mother, who is dead and in hell, she couldn't get past that. She could not get past that. That there is none that doeth good. No, not one. She couldn't get past it. Can you? Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known? Why? For there is, there, is, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Now there are those out there who's like, well, that was talking about those before the flood. And yeah, 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 right, right. Okay, then the flood happens. But then it says that in Jeremiah, another dispensation. Okay, and then it says that here in Romans chapter 3, for this dispensation, okay, man's heart is not good. You're not going to get away from that. Okay? Our hearts are not good. I'm a sinner, but I'm a saved sinner. You coadjutors, you're lost sinners going to hell. And those of you who, who do not uh, adhere to any kind of thing, you're lost sinners, you're going to hell. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 20 now, picking up at verse 13. Jeremiah 20, picking up at verse 13. Hmm. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord. For he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Amen, amen, alleluia. Cursed be the day when I was born. Let not, that, let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. You ever feel like that? Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew and repented not. And let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide. Because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave. 
and her womb to be always great with me. Again, notice in verse 13, he says, Sing unto the Lord and praise the Lord, but then he laments. Verse 18, Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? You ever feel like that, brother, sister, huh? Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Why was he be feeling like that? Why? What was making Jeremiah so downcast? He was speaking for the Lord. But those of his own nation, his kindred, were doing what? Jeremiah 23, verses 26 on to verse 32. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they have, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Think about these disgusting charismatics who keep having these dreams, these prophetic dreams or these prophetic words, like that Albert guy from uh, God Unlimited or that Sid Roth disgusting puke bag that he is. These charismatic devils, you say to a Jew, what is a Christian? Roman Catholic. Yeah, Catholics are Christian. But they also now, more often than not, are adding into that fray the Kenneth Copelands, the uh, Joel Osteens, the, um, what's, uh, uh, the Joker lady. Oh, I forgot her name, the Joker. Oh, what's her name? Butch, help me, uh, Joyce Myers. Yeah, the Joker. Call her the Joker. Okay, they let they attribute it, they attribute that as being Christian as well. See, the Jews. They have enough sense to see that which is Christian, is not of the Church of the Living God. We ought to learn something from them, on that regard. Just saying. Let's continue. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell the dream, and he that hath my word. Let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff? Chaff that gets burnt up to the wheat. Wheat that feeds you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Okay? So the chaff, in verse 28, are those who say, I have dreamed a dream. And the wheat are those who have his word. Okay. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell, and uh, and do tell them, and cause my people to. Uh, here, let me read that again. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people, people at all, saith the Lord. See, those of us at the church of the living God who tell you lost people the truth, we suffer from them. These lost devils who want to take you away from the truth, they're not profiting you. You are going to share in their calamity when it cometh. You need to be aware of that. Okay? Now look at verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Doth this offend you? Am I speaking to you? Am I? Hebrews chapter 4. 
like I told you, when I turn on this, this computer here, this laptop, and do this, I address you, whoever you are, personally. I'm talking to you. It's me and you. You and I. Okay? We're doing this together. Okay? This ain't a one-man show. You're looking at me. I can't see you where you are right now. But I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. I'm talking to you. And if something I say cuts you, because... Hey, even my enemies have to admit, I speak from this quite a bit. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12, on to verse 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful, alive, thank you brother, is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God is alive, powerful, sharper than a sword. And what does it do? It pierces, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul, spirit, and look at this. Joints, marrow, and the heart. That's the whole person there. Because are not joints and marrow and heart, is that not part of the body? So the word of God pierces the spirit, soul, and body. The whole body. Person. Ephesians chapter 6. You'll notice we're doing this a little backwards. Ephesians chapter 6. Meaning going from Hebrews backwards that way. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 11. On to verse 12. Oh. On the verse 20, excuse me. Ephesians 6, verses 11, on the verse 12, uh, 20. We already read one verse here, but... Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Not just one piece. The whole sandwich. Okay? Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Girt your loins. Sisters, um, the armor of God is spoken in context as pertaining unto the male. Not you women, okay? So your loins, girt, okay? Have the stones to stand for the truth. Beg your pardon? You get where I'm going with that? We'll leave it alone, okay? But stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate protects your heart and it's the breastplate of righteousness. Who's righteousness? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, being ready to go as he calls you to. And it takes preparation. It takes a long time. The Lord took his time to prepare me, to put me to where I am at today. I couldn't have done this even five, six, eight years ago. I tried. But see, my pride was involved. And the Lord showed me, you're not going to do this. You can't do this. I said, thank you. But then he actually want, wanted me. He called me to do this. Then that chance, like, whoa, I don't want to do this. And I took that three months away. And what I went through in those three months, oh, wow. Wow. But, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
God will prepare you. Sometimes that preparation can be really quick, depending on him, or he will take his time. He took his time with me. Okay? He wants you to be prepared, and he will prepare you. Sometimes you just got to work some things out before that happens. And there are some of you out there who I do truly believe would be an incredible witness unto our Lord Jesus Christ, which is why the enemies fear you. But there are some things that need to be worked out. And we pray for that. We pray for that. I love you. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, shield of faith. Cover your face, your the breastplate, you know, to take the brunt. But remember sometimes you gotta, while you got the shield up, you gotta do this. To see the battle. Okay? And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet covers your head, obviously. Helmet of salvation covering your head. Knowing that you're called of the Lord and that he has saved you. Because remember, John has written, First uh, John, These things have I written unto you that ye may know that ye have eternal life. See, unlike what Catholicism teaches you, which is the, they call the sin of presumption, we of the Church of the Living God, we are to know that we are going to go to be with the Lord if we are absent with the, from the body. But see, you Catholics, you can't have any assurance of salvation because they call it the sin of presumption. But see, we of the Church of the Living God, we are to know the helmet of salvation, knowing we're saved, And, of course, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the authorized version. The NIV is not the Word of God. The non-King James is not the Word of God. The authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Version, that is the Word of God. Young man, Our young, our young sister has you watched this video. There, there are several videos on this very channel that you can look, look at about the authorized version. Okay? Wake up. There's only one set of scripture. Well, you don't like this because it cuts you, huh, boy? Good. It's supposed to. Praise the Lord. You get saved, you will praise the Lord. I, I can promise you. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Pray for one another. Don't just take your five little minutes and pray, thank you, Lord, thank you for this, this, this. I'm out of here. Pray for other people, brethren. Pray for one another. What, you too busy? Shut up. You too busy. My foot. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. I know guys who work on farms with multitude of children getting up at an early in the morning, like two in the morning, spends his 45 minutes a day in the scripture, takes care of his wife, his kids, and all that. And what? What? You, you don't got 10 minutes to pray for other people? And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay? Go, now go to Romans chapter 10. 
<laughs> you, my enemies, you're going to love this. <laughs> Romans chapter 10. Okay? <laughs> you are. You're, you're going you're gonna to get a chuckle out of this. <laughs> Romans chapter 10. Verses 14 on to verse 17. Okay? Talking about the word of God is quick and powerful. Jeremiah spake the word of the Lord unto people. We are ambassadors of Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and having the word of reconciliation. Okay? So, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 on to verse 17. How shall they then, how then, excuse me, shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? This is talking about you idiot devils. Verse 14 is talking about the preacher. Those who are sent to preach the gospel. Okay? Verse 15. Okay? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. See, you you easy believism devils, you're spiritually discerned. You're not saved. You can't get this. Verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 on to verse 17. It's talking about those who are sent of our Lord to preach unto those so they will hear. It's not that difficult. But see, you're lost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, pardon. Let's continue. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And how shall they, and what does that say? And how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Uh, everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit was uh, the first one that I was made aware of who made a big stink about, they never read about verse 14. <laughs> they always stop at verse 13. <laughs> you know, brethren, you run into that with these devils who say about, you know, they never mention 14. And the reason why they're saying that is because it says believe twice. And they're circling believe and want to blur out the context of the entire verse. Okay? That's Jesuit. That's what they do. Okay? And John 17, 17. See, we went backwards, kind of. See, you see. Okay? John 17, 17. The real Lord's Prayer. Okay? The real Lord's Prayer. Hmm. Uh, let's, um, <laughs> let's read verses 16 and on to verse 18. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with what we just read in Romans, okay? As thou hast sent me into the world, so have I also sent them into the world. You know, I know you devils will fight about that ridiculous argument that you like to come up with about Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 14, and make a big deal out of it. It's stupid. Your argument is stupid. Okay? Absolutely stupid. Okay? Your best bet is that you're preaching to lost people who want nothing to do with the truth. So they are your own crowd. So go along, run along, run along off to hell, you wicked devils. Okay? Now, 
why was all this happening? You know, why is all this happening? You know, the, the Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures, is out there. Okay? There are those of the Church of the Living God out there who are preaching the truth. Why was this happening to uh, Israel, for our example, today? Why is this happening today? Well, we know about uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, about men will be lovers of their own selves and stuff like that. But look... In Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. I gotta watch my time here. Ezekiel chapter 3. Uh, come on, this is. Uh, <laughs> Ezekiel chapter. Here, let me show you this. This is what I'm dealing with. Can you see that? that that's, that's what I'm trying to decipher to find verses and chapter. Do you see that? Why are you using it? Well, I don't. I like I told you, I bought it to debunk something, and then I never used it. It's like ah, I'll use it for this video. Ezekiel chapter three, verses one under verse nine. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat thou that eat that thou findest. Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak my words unto them. That's the church of the living God. Whatever capacity you are in, you are a minister of reconciliation. Okay? You don't have to do this. But you are a minister, a minister of reconciliation. Quit using your excuse me. Quit using your excuses and fulfill that mandate of our Lord. Please. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Why? Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Give you an example. You go to a homeless person who's wallowing in his own vomit. And you come to him with the truth of the gospel about being broken of your self-righteousness, contrition, fear of the Lord, how that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And the Lord used you, the Lord used you to bring him onto himself through the Romans road. See, none of you devils have been used in that capacity. You can't tell me you have with your easy believism doctrine. How? You believe Jesus died for your sins? Uh, sure. You're saved! <laughs> no. And you coadjutors. Has the Lord ever used you? Huh? Forgive me for how that sounds. But see, the Lord will use some of you. The Lord will use some of you to bring people onto him through the Romans road. There are more ways than the Romans road, obviously. But the Romans road, you know, you use the book of Romans. Okay? Um, any of you have been had the privilege to be used of the Lord to bring someone onto himself that he uses you? You know what I'm talking about. See, these devils, they know nothing of that. Because they're just used to create division and to make false converts. Remember, you got one finger pointing. How many fingers are pointing back at you, buddy boy? Yeah. And that's an all-encompassing buddy boy, by the way. But, see, someone who is broken, wanting to be saved, willing to hear, they'll hear it. But you go to one of these Christians 
Not too many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But no, you go to a Christian from a church building who just believes. Who, we just want to sing our praises of worship and uh, give you 10% tithe. Have your 20-minute sermon that does nothing for you but just itch your ears. And then you're, you're, you're in your little church building talking about sports and the Cubs games or whatever you want to call it. See? Let's continue. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. Why? For they will not hearken unto me. See, he's the messenger. They won't hear that you, that his messenger. Hence, they're not listening to him as you as the messenger. Get it? For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Church of the living God, instruction in righteousness. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not! Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, uh, verses 25 under verse 31. See, divers are hardened. And so many people out there have been, 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 been bombarded, bombarded, excuse me, by the religion of Christianity. Not of the Church of the Living God. But that what is this Christian. I am totally against that which is Christian. I personally believe we ought to chuck it and just go with Church of the Living God. Sure would Clara, in our experience, my wife and I, sure does clear up a lot of confusion when you tell people that. What's, what denomination is that? It's not a denomination. That's what we call ourselves. You, the lost world, called us Christians. I'm not lost, really. And then it goes from there. Hey, I know you watch my videos. It's not as hard as you think. Try it. Try it for a week. In your videos, try it for a week. I dare you. It's not as hard as you're making it out to be. Let's, let's go. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 25 on to verse 31. They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Hello, church-building Christians. Okay. Oh, I, I said 25, didn't I? Excuse me. Okay, verse 25 on to verse 31. Excuse me. <laughs> Your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins have withholden good things from you. Hello, America. Hello, Australia. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set a snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Doctrinally, he's talking about Israel. A little instruction in righteousness, my American countrymen. And there are those of you people of my country think that America is going to come back when they bring Napoleon back, uh, excuse me, Donald Trump in 2024. You're crazy, man. Ugh. 
a wonderful, a horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? America, was America ever a nation that was of the church of the living God? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I truly don't know. But see here in America, the God who is the God of the authorized version of the scriptures is not the God that these people want. They want the little G God that man of sin, the son of perdition. And that's what the church building Christians are giving them. That is what these easy believism devils are giving them. These, that is the God that these coadjutors are giving to these people. They don't want to hear the truth. There are some out there who do. But on the whole spectrum, on the broader spectrum, the prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Any of you who see this video, who are not saved, you cannot rightly say to yourself, why is your loving God letting this happen to us? You rejected him. See, that's, that's a byproduct of the Christians. They tell you God loves you. No, God loved you, past tense, and gave to you, past tense. Okay? And if you reject that, God's love, which is at Calvary, our Lord Jesus Christ, and you come to him any other way besides brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, but want to go up another way? Guess what there, cousin? God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. Okay? His love is not for you. His wrath is for you. I've covered that before. Okay? But see, that's what you get from these church-building Christians. They tell you God loves you. Nothing can be further than the truth. God loved and gave. See? And because of your rejection, this is why God allows this stuff to happen. Because you rejected him. Isaiah 30, verses 9, on to verse 13. This is also mentioned in the Pauline epistles, but we're specifically looking here for instruction in righteousness. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not to us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, Thus saith the Holy One of Israel, Because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. This is why that's, this is happening unto you. This is why this is happening unto America, unto Australia, unto this world. Because the time of the Gentiles is about to end, this dispensation. Soon. When, I don't know. Once we're out of here, that begins the time of Jacob's trouble. And this is happening because you have rejected the Lord and you hate him. And if you're lost and you make it through this whole thing, you'll be without excuse, man. You will be without excuse. You won't be able to say, I didn't know. Now you do. 
while we're in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1. Hmm. Now, in context, doctrinally, dispensationally, he is talking about Israel. But this is for our instruction in righteousness. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4 to verse 9. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, not just corrupted, but they corrupt others. Sounds like a couple of coadjutors that I know that are trying to do that very thing. Hmm. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. <laughs> Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will, ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. You know, when the Lord isn't sending affliction on anybody to try to get their attention, that's scary. That means that He's given you over. If you're of the Church of the Living God, and you're in sin, and you're not being chastised, and you know you're saved, that's a problem. That's a problem. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land strangers devour in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Look at what the Jesuits have done to America. I rest my case. It's not the Jews. It's the Jesuits, by the way. As the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Now let's can continue reading on to verse 15. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and of the, and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Now, it shifts here from verse 9, okay? And now from verse 10, it shifts. He's addressing those who are being religious and going through their manipulations, their mechanics. You can put this in context. You can liken this onto the Christians today in their church buildings. Verse 12. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblation. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. I cannot away with, excuse me. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. You Christians who are religious, who go to your buildings, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Why? Your hands are full of blood. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 23 on to verse 21. 
And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey, and the devil himself walketh, around, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's in 1 Peter chapter 5, go find it. They have devoured souls, they have taken the treasure and precious things, they have made her many wid widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law, and have profaned mine holy things. Church building Christians. Christians. Yeah. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shewed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I am profaned among them. Think about it like this. These Christians in the buildings. And most of what is Christian today. All of what is Christian today. Profanes our Lord. The Christians of today. They put no true difference between the holy and profane. They themselves are profane. Look at the MacArthur crowd. Okay? Look at these Baptists. Never mind the Lutherans. They're Catholics. Never mind the Methodists. They're Catholics as well. We need to go back to the beginning. I, I am a total firm believer in that. That it's going to go full circle like it is in the book of Acts. I truly believe that. And we need to distinguish ourselves as the church of God or the church of the living God. Let the world have their Christianity. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves raving the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, Seen vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression, and exercised robbery, and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Tactics of devils. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge, and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. And verses... Um, uh, from verse 23 on to verse 31, in context to the time of Jacob's trouble, when we, the church of the living God, are taken out of the way, we're not there for the time of Jacob's trouble. Look at verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should stand, that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should destroy it, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. How many of these Christians are truly standing against what's going on? But no, they have their church building, so they got to go along with it. I've said this to you before. I truly believe that somewhere on earth, somewhere, on this vast earth, I hope and pray that at least one person, spirit, soul, and body, one person out of the immense population of this earth, that one person a day gets saved. That's what I hope for, pray for. I personally think what happens when there comes a couple days where no one is saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. Am I being too wishful, uh, too uh, wishful, if you will, 
thinking that once uh, one spirit, soul, and body, one person a day gets saved every day. Is that wishful thinking? Maybe. But what is what if the what about the opposite? Nobody gets saved. And if that's the case, how long is our Lord going to put up with that when no one wants him anymore at all? Psalm 140. Under all this, brethren, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war, like my enemies are against me and against you. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Shilah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have pr proposed to overthrow my goings. I guess I should be flattered that there are people out there that want to destroy me. <laughs> but this, by this I know that thou favorest me, Lord, because the enemy doesn't triumph over me. Over you, brother, sister. The proud have hit a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, Salah. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. See, when you're attacked, brethren, turn it on to the Lord. I, I need to do that more often myself, but I have been. Turn it on to the Lord. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Remember the helmet of salvation? Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. As for the head of those that can pass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. I hope so. Kind of already have. Let burning coals fall, fall upon them. Let them, let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. And when the Lord does deliver you from your enemy and from trials and tribulation, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the whole world rejoice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the heavens rejoice. I just messed that, that hymn up. I'm learning my hymns, by the way. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8. On the verse 15. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Do you not know that you are accepted in the beloved, fellow brother, sister of the church of the living God? You know you are of his bones and of his flesh. He cannot deny himself. That if someone attacks you, they might as well be attacking him. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? You ain't forgot that, have you? Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear not, for I am with thee. 
Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The right hand of my righteousness, meaning our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. That's a promise for us, brethren. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Bye-bye. That's your ultimate end, you wicked devils. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee. That they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Where are those thine accusers? No, nowhere, Lord. You mean no one's accusing you? No, Lord, neither do I accuse you. I just bradized that. Beg your pardon. For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thee, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. One second. Again, I beg your pardon, but this is very meat because a lot of us are struggling, a lot of us are suffering. The Lord has had great mercy upon my wife and I and is bringing us out of all our trials. We got still trials to come. But through it all, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. My wife and I changed that to catching away as we sing. Thank you, pardon. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. <laughs> I do beg your pardon. I do beg your pardon, brethren. I do beg your pardon. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good 
to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's going to be it for this video. Um, like I've said, we, we've had some things going on personally that requires my attention to be with my wife for certain things that have been going on. And also, there is a possibility that our brother, our best friend, Alexander Hartley, may be joining us here um, sometime this week and be staying with us for a couple of days, like four days. So, uh, I'm going to be here. You know, you'll be able to get a hold of me uh, through email. Those of you uh, who have our number, you can get a hold of us that way. Um, but uh, it's possible that I might not have... I mean, I got videos. I mean, there, <laughs> I got, got videos prepared, you know, just waiting for the green light. But it is possible that might not upload a video for a couple of days here. That is why, okay? That is why. Because of things that are going on here with us personally and also to the fact that our best friend, our beloved brother Alexander Hartley, may join us for a couple of days here. So if that be the case, it will be a while until a new video comes. You never know. You never know. Um, but uh, just wanted to let you know, okay? Keep your eyes upon Jesus. And remember that in your trials and tribulation, to keep your nose in the book and on your knees keep your eyes toward heaven, toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And seek him. Because, you know, I've, I've never forgotten this. Uh, I heard it put best in a documentary I heard once about submarines. You want to get someone to believe in God, put them on a sinking submarine. Maybe some of the trials and tribulations that you're going through is our Lord wants your undivided attention. Or maybe it's like Job, you don't know why. But even then, don't charge God foolishly. God has his purpose. God has his reasons. And brethren, the Lord has recently delivered us from so much and has brought us through and has provided and has blessed us. We still got more to come. But as for me and, I, and my house, we will serve the Lord. How about you? We love you. Thank you to all of you who pray for us. We pray for so many of you. Don't forget to pray for one another, brethren. Especially now. Please remember the people that we mentioned at the beginning of this video. Uh, especially, our, especially our dear brother, our, our friend from Australia. He, he, he's, oh, oh. Anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching this. If you do, please consider these things. We love you. And we will see you in the next video.